YouTube, people of the internet, welcome to probably one of the most exciting, one of the most exciting interviews I've gotten the opportunity to do. I am very, very blessed and thankful to get to today present to you the winners of a Cyrus League season two, Hong Kong legends from Kingdom 30. There are a lot of people out there who call themselves legends, but there are very few people in this world who can call themselves legends and back it up with actions. And these guys are that right there. They came into Ark of Osiris very quietly throughout Osiris League season. And from there, they just went crazy. They became a standard for us to know what's going on, how to do, what to do. They perfected Osiris League and Ark of Osiris mode. And today we have three members from HKL with us on the call. Let's go ahead and bring them up. Uh, gentlemen, are you guys with us? Yeah. yeah. Hi. We yep. have Ricky. Yep. You are, I believe, uh, the, the leader of uh, the HKL Osiris League team, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Ricky, I'm the leader of Hong Kong Legends uh, from k Sweet. And then we have Paranoa with us. What's up, Paranoa? You're a known name. Yeah. Am I? I guess A little so. bit. And <laughs> of course, we got Billy here with us as well. One of the stronger players from King from HKL. How you doing, man? Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah, so let's, let's dive <clears throat> straight into this because I... I've actually been waiting for this for a little while. Ever since you guys won, I was like, man, how do I get in touch with these guys? Because you guys have an amazing background, right? So can you give us a little bit of, of just the story of HKL? I mean, you guys are Kingdom 30. You guys are from the beginning of this game. Um, you want to give us a little bit of a background of your kingdom, the power you sit, uh, your alliance, how things work out there and all that? Oh yes, Juan. Uh, I I think I'm the only one from from uh, K30, and because uh, the two of them just uh, in, uh, immigrated from other kingdoms. Okay. And my alliance is, uh, is an international alliance with the with own people, and my kingdom is uh, almost half, maybe half or most 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 of us uh, are from Hong Kong. Maybe uh, two hundred or 300s mm -hmm. uh yeah yeah that and um, that's crazy i think i think uh k30 is the biggest servers uh in in hong kong yeah so um, you got, King King 30 30 is primarily you have a, a mo mostly are from hong kong yeah yeah i'm mostly from hong kong and that's and awesome. the and the us uh, are from uh singapore malaysia and 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 over the world yeah cool yeah, that's awesome. So you guys have been building up this kingdom, uh, being part of the early kingdoms. It's a little bit of a rough situation with Imperium and all that. Um, of course, first of all, I haven't said this yet. Massive, massive congratulations. I mean, I've said this to you, Ricky, Ricky in private and the two of you as well before this cast. Um, when the match ended, it was undisputed that you guys are by far the best arc of a Cyrus team that's ever gotten to yeah. play in a Cyrus league. So you guys didn't only win, you guys won big time. You guys won in a big fashion. And all I gotta say is first of all, congratulations. You got beat, beat the heck out of us in JWM too. And then you guys destroyed our main team as well. It was just impressive. So congrats guys. All right, let's, let's dive into this. Let's just straight up dive into this. The HKL team, the core 30 players that played this season. How long have you guys been playing together? When was this team formed? Yeah. Um, Ricky, I you, think, maybe I, think, I can I something, think, man. Yeah. Okay, man. Yeah. Um, I think we just cooperate two months or a few, few months before before the uh, the OL start. Uh, in K30, uh, we have we have a culture that uh, we we never gather the strongest people in one alliance to attend a game. Uh, we 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 want we want everyone can get the reward uh, from the arc game. So uh, we, we we just assign the uh, uh, the people who are favorable 
in different time slots. So our main our main teammate will be separated to different alliance. Mm -hmm. So that's the strategy uh, from K30 and under my management. Uh, in, uh, but actually this is very difficult to form the team in our game because uh, some may feel uh, full of pressure under my management because uh, I, I'm not, I, I'm not a nice man. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and both of the creatures <laughs> they are, are a bit of me. Yeah, and, yeah, okay. So, um, at least you're so, honest. Yeah, we we need we, we need maybe uh one. So finally, we 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 try to PM every uh high high power player and active player to uh to try to uh let them join us join our team. Yeah, maybe 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 uh, Billy can say more in the details how uh, how he approached to the single pair. Okay, so um, yeah. a little bit of background from myself. So uh, I'm originally from another kingdom and I migrated to K30 just before the Osiris League uh, begin. I mean the qualifier round. Okay. So um, <clears throat> so we, we, we formed the team uh, I mean, basically before all of this, before the information that the Osiris League uh, Season 2 released, we basically just uh, play our own, own game and throw our own game. Like going all meat or stuff like that and <laughs> just having fun. And then uh, when the Osiris League uh, released, and then we start to think, okay, maybe we need to get something, like get something going and become like more serious in our gameplay. So um, we indeed we, we find uh, everyone that we think it's suitable to come and join us. And I think for uh, our kingdom, we get two teams start uh, for the original uh, uh, qualifier rounds. So uh, we just PM everyone that we think it's uh, okay with, like for example, T5 uh, troops, and then we get the players that we want and we actually have like a, a group to 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 uh, organize this at the very beginning so so uh we have two teams and then we go through the qualifier rounds and then after some uh setbacks from one of our teams then we gather all people together to become the current players that we are playing together in the um championship round or the, the the normal stage. Yeah. So yeah, and, and also I think ah oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. yeah and, 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 and also I would like to add one point that um I I want to I always want to figure out uh who has positive attitude for to join the game. Um what what I always mention in K30 is attitude. Attitude is so important to uh for everything. Um some some people has uh uh, has low low power such as uh, six, 60 million or for uh, 70 million but 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 if you uh, if the players has has uh, has good attitude and they can certainly go by uh, 30 or 40 minutes to 100 million power to attend our final game and also they uh, they will try everything they can such as uh, weapon commanders or something to fulfill the requirement in the final game. So I, I think uh, we are we are the really awesome team that uh, we have the very good attitude to do everything. And also I will mention about that more in 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 uh in uh, maybe maybe in the other question later. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So and uh, and one of the things that one, I wanted one, to one ask more thing, you, one more thing. Yeah go ahead. Please. Okay. Okay. Uh sorry sorry one more thing is that um if you notice HKL, we, we have uh, 30 uh, players in the <clears throat> uh, main team substitutes, not 15. So this is because uh, we actually begging people to join our uh, HKL team. And then yeah. I don't think like because people are scared of Ricky. So <laughs> we cannot yeah, like, yeah. get like 15 substitutes. And um, maybe I I need to shield myself uh, after saying this because I don't I don't know if Ricky will read really me. Wait wait. So you're say saying this. that you guys didn't have 15 <laughs> substitutions. You guys didn't have 15 subs because essentially you couldn't I'm... get 
extra players to want to be on the team. So you're telling yeah, me that people so in Kingdom scary. 30 were so scared <laughs> of, of, of um, Ricky that they preferred not to be on the team. How many of them you think are now really, really mad because they could have been champions too? <laughs> not sure, but then uh, I think yeah. not really few of them. <laughs> Well, go ahead, go ahead. It's, sorry, it's, sorry. it's one of those things. It's really interesting. So you guys essentially started off by just playing around in Ark of Osiris. And as the, the Osiris League started forming, you, you decided, you know, hey, let's try to step up our game a little bit. And from that moment on, on you guys just went into it, changed everything from just playing for fun to playing on a competitive level, right? That's, that's what I understood out of all this. So my question is, how did you guys prepare like wh when you guys decided we're going to make a strategy we're going to go play our best game ever we're not just going to have fun we're actually going to be competitive how did you guys transform mm -hmm. from a fun team to a very professional team what kind of things did you guys do mm, uh, actually i think i can uh mention more about uh, about the parties uh, practice mode in our game mm -hmm. and that's the uh, was some was some was some uh, arrangement uh, we we did a uh, practice, uh, maybe one one to two days uh, per week only. Well, we 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 didn't practice uh, every day. This two, one one time uh, per week, week. Uh, In the yeah, end, one 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 time <laughs> one time per week. Yeah, actually, and uh, actually one the the one is the real game. The real game is meaning that uh, we 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 want to demonstrate the real arc game. To, and and separate two two team a uh, one team to two team yeah so just like a uh, right hand attack left hand <laughs> and 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 the other practice mode is to pass a uh, commander why and uh, and also that's why we uh we, we use at wally rather than uh archer wally so uh that's the results of our testing and we did we did many many uh scenario of testing in the practice mode yeah, that's very awesome for that. So as a team, you guys and practiced also, once or twice a week. And then on top of those practices, you also did scenario testing, commander pairing yeah. testings and all that in, in separate. Uh, exactly. Nah, that's cool. Um, and you guys, yeah, of exactly. course, did ended up being to a point where almost every day you're doing some sort of practice, right? Either commander pairing, scenario testing or full blown arc <laughs> practice, right? Yeah, because um, because uh, many, many, many of our <laughs> are married uh, if, if if you attend too much practice mode you'll be broken <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, that's the point we we're not we, we are not really practicing a lot so if you are counting those uh, uh trying commanders pairing in then maybe two times a week yeah. <clears throat> two times a week so when you came into practice mode looking for um mm. looking for commander pairings and all that you would already make one session where in that session you knew these people are going to test this, these people are going to test that, these people are going to test that, and at the end you consolidate yeah, yeah. the data? Yeah. Yep. Yes, correct, correct. And, and also I would like to thank, uh, thank uh, Pewa because uh, Pewa has many advice and many ideas about the commander pair and uh, talent on, on that. We, we test a lot of that. Yeah, yeah but they Pewa, to me. Pewa a lot of them. I have like yeah. a, I have a, like a hundred ideas and only one passes through. But... Hey, that's that's better. Yeah. One is better than zero, right? I can tell you that ideas ideas are cheap, but the actual execution of them is expensive. And the fact that even one went through it means that the idea was that good, you know. I and mean, that's a good thing. And it's also good to and know the... that people can give you suggestions, right? And they might get through. Yeah, and, and the yeah, remaining yeah. ninety nine is at worth being the secondary. Yeah, but you yeah. you shouldn't you shouldn't leak these uh, strategies. This, uh -oh. this is for the invitation. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh, yeah, you guys are, you guys are not gonna get yourselves in trouble, right? Nobody's gonna no. get zeroed out of this, right? Because now I now I have to figure out something else. But yeah, we'll get there. Okay. So, when you guys started doing a Cyrus League, right? You've been practicing. You know what you're doing. You're getting aggressive. You're playing your new type of game. Have you guys done also opposition research? Did you guys watch vods? What did you What did you guys Did you also do your research and homework about your opponents? Mm. Mm, um, I think this will be a bit technical, but then I can try explain. But Gecko, we 
do you mind if I like、uh, leak some of the information from your team? I, I, can't say, I can't say much. If you say you gotta say what you gotta say, I don't know what you're gonna,、um, I don't know what you have in mind. So hope and pray. Okay, just kidding. I mean,、um, we 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 do、uh, watch opponents match、uh, for sure, and then、uh, I think it's since the、um, uh, qualif. Then、uh, I always encourage our teammates to watch the opponents. You know, as I said, we start from scratch, right?、Mm -hmm. uh, we don't even have a plan before the the、uh, the arc game of Osiris Stick. And then、uh, what we can start off with is like we copy others, right?、Mm -hmm. So we we just watch like how you guys play, how a P two four five play in their game, and then we we start start to formulate our own game based on. Your performance or your strategies, and then we notice a lot of like funny stuff. For example, ah,、uh, some teams they will rally the obelisk ah、uh, from the beginning of the match,、mm -hmm. and then some will like swarm opponents ah、uh, structure from the beginning of the match, and some will not even occupy the structures when the alarm of thirty by fifty two minutes start. So, ah,、uh, we have a lot of um. Uh, observations, uh, our like uh, uh, review from your game or others' game, and then we take those that we think it's workable or viable, and we leave those that we don't think is、uh, viable. So that is、uh, one of the things that we 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 start to formulate our own、uh, strategies. It's actually based on strategies from all round teams,、uh, the qualifier rounds. And then、uh, for sure we prepared, and then I I don't want to get too technical before everyone gets sleepy, but then、uh, we 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 will not notice that people will、uh, commit some mistakes. And for example, we will、uh, in, like take take a look in the our upcoming opponents, not really those that that is、uh, right. But for example, if we are in the、uh, round of last sixteen, we won't just look into the the people that we're going to face in the round of last eight. We would just directly perhaps perhaps、uh, look into the、uh, match that、uh, we will probably、uh, be facing. For example, GWM two, which is our last four opponent.、Mm -hmm. So so we do keep an eye on every opponent, and then we do notice some of the interesting things and the usual practice that、uh, you guys. We will have, for example, Gecko. You you are going into the、uh, rallies,、uh, starting from fifty two minutes.、Uh, you will go into the opolis beforehand, and then you join the rally from Seng. So this is some some things that we we will、uh, notice that not just、uh, from the perspective of who is hitting who, who is rallying who, but then it's more about of the off uh, uh, the off battles、uh, movement. The movement that you guys are preparing for the match, not really the movement that you guys going into the rally or going into like some fights. So, so we we think those are the important stuff. And then、uh, we also notice some facts. For example, people are not utilizing、uh, the teleports well. For example, for one one k, last final match, they are not even using the free teleports、mm -hmm. uh, throughout the whole match. So、um, this is the things that we we will also take into consideration、uh, the designing our strategies. So our plan is not simply just okay we run our own plan, but then we run our plan based on others'、uh, reaction or based on others strategies. Yeah, so it、and、was I, for sure、clear. we it was very clear yeah, by the way because when you guys came against us and I'm talking about JWM two. I I I noticed off the bat that you guys instantly knew where the weak spot was, how to hit the weak spot. Yeah. I mean that you guys knew that our sky altar was the the weakest point of that of that whole thing, and it was so clear、uh, that not... you had tested it and ensured that your plan to take us out would work. It was really impressive. Exactly. And then we noticed that you guys,、uh, the skill teleport will be based on some occupation. On the, the marches will be like、uh, keeping in those、uh, altar or the shrine structure, and that's why we we when we attack and we succeed in alt shrine on the upper uh, uh, side, and then you guys cannot teleport. I mean,、mm -hmm. at least one or two of you guys cannot teleport. 
Ah, so that, you guys are going the, even the deeper. You're looking for occupation yep. of buildings, which you know that if you take the exactly. building now, one building is missing. Now people need to put their march somewhere else, which will delay the teleport, which will delay the... Yeah, it's it exactly. was super busy. I mean, as someone who played the match, it was super, super visible that you guys had all of that time down to perfection. And that actually leads, I mean, leads me to, the, to my kind of my next question, which is... Um, how did you guys work on getting your your timings so well coordinated? Um, I'm not necessarily asking how what are your timings, but how did you at the moment that you realized you need to have a certain timing, you need to do something at a specific time. How did you guys coordinate it in a way that as throughout the match you knew what time you need to do what? And also what's what's a good tip you guys have for newer teams who are trying to now learn how to time their their play a little bit better? Um, okay, so Ricky, please stop me if I uh, leak too much of our strategies. <laughs> uh -oh. And and first of okay. all, all, I think uh, most importantly is our core, which is bullshit because we practice and that's because we want to execute our own plan and we want everyone to have the same mindset on who is going to wear at which time. So this is the fundamental part of our timing. And then uh, we walk work onwards and then that is because um, we want to ensure our plan will be executing well so we think one step ahead how we can ensure we run our own plan instead of following others plan so take one example one one tiny example if you notice um, we rarely uh, JWM obelisk at the first very beginning and then we do not dismiss it mm -hmm. and then okay so for many of you guys, you might think, okay, uh, that is a failed attempt and uh, we, we don't get anything, but then we drag our five teams, five marchers on the back of their own obelisk. So this is normal people, how, how you guys think, right? But then um, actually for us, our intention is never to like uh, um, directly obtain or get the obelisk. If you can see uh, our timing, that teleport will be going like the skill teleport or no actually their own uh going in like uh 51 52 52 minutes uh game time mm -hmm. so so they will have teleports on around that time 52 minutes but then if they want to uh initiate rarely once they teleport then they they need to have extra much to support those rarely right Mm -hmm. And what we do is that we 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 directly attack the obelisk at around fifty one minute and like thirty seconds. So, their um without knowing this in advance, they need their uh people who teleport to defend the obelisk, and that is what they exactly do. So you cause they're much to you cause disruptions support. in your opposition's strategy. You just make so them, them go. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and then their march, their march is just going to support the mm -hmm. obelisk and to defend instead of doing their normal business, just go directly to our structure and and from then on, then we you, if you see subsequently, we don't even have troops in our own structure. So this is the one of the uh, results of of our uh, ready on the opponent's obelisk. So this is one of the minor like uh, plan we we have to ensure the time all goes right and we can ensure our plan will be executed instead of they playing their own game. Well, the just chat one, is one, going one of crazy. The, the cra chat is going crazy. Please stop, please stop, please stop. Exposed. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't necessarily think, I don't necessarily think okay. you're exposed. I don't think necessarily exposed something because uh, that, that wasn't... Um, that wasn't clear in hindsight, you know, like when it happened at the moment, it was very like, what the heck are they doing? But once the match was over, it's like, oh, so this is why they did it. So like, yeah. uh, chat, guys, relax. He, uh, if Ricky wouldn't have let him, by the way, Ricky is as the leader of Kingdom 30, <laughs> the king of, of uh, Kingdom 30. He wouldn't have let him say too much. Trust the guy would be zeroed by now if he yeah. said too much. Don't worry. Yeah, no worries. No worries. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> going to use fun. it anymore, by the way. We are not going to use it anymore. No, it because because just our, one game. our strategy will, will change in the invitational yeah. game. Yeah. We, yeah, we, well, we, we will have is different, right? Everybody's going to have yeah, supposedly to, 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 the to same commanders and all that. 
Yeah, and we have already come up with another new strategy that maybe will surprise you again when we use it. Just tell them now. I mean, <laughs> oh look, you <laughs> that's, the, that's the paradigm. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, by the way, I think after the invitation, oh, yeah, yeah, me, me, I, I think the most important thing is to buy a timer or or set a alarm <laughs> to <laughs> for us because uh because yeah. why why our timer is seems perfect because we we know that uh, we have to do uh what's thing in uh what minute yeah yeah so just like so like what Billy mentioned in the example in our final game yeah yeah and then Ricky needs everyone to take a picture of their timer to prove that they actually buy one it is real it's a fact yeah <laughs> so everybody okay. was rocking a timer in the yep. in the team. You have you need to have yeah. a little clock next to your table or something, and yeah. you just gotta <laughs> count down everything. And uh, yeah, it's true. That's that's actually awesome. That's really cool. So you guys you guys went from playing for fun to you have to buy a timer and know all the times within what eight weeks. That's actually fairly cool. Yep. I was like, I'm very impressed. That's yeah. sick. Yeah, I hope you, you know guys after see the all, smile on my face. I'm like, yo, these guys are on another level. <laughs> Timers. And after and all, stuff. people might not be really regret if they are not joining us because of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's too uh, hard. Now they want to get. Now everybody wants to be part of the team, huh? <laughs> okay. Yep. <yeah. clears throat> So what's what's something uh, one mistake you noticed that um, a lot of Osiris League teams um, consistently made? Uh, I'm sure you guys, because you've just studied all the teams and you guys timed all these timings so well, you guys, I'm sure you guys know of at least one mistake. You don't necessarily need to say who did it and why, but what's something that you know you've noticed most people do wrong in Osiris League? Uh, I I actually, yes. I think I think you should be added to. Yeah, yes. I've added to. I thought it before because uh, when uh, when every OL team except HKL facing JWM, they they had a very very negative attitude. That they think uh, they will lose, and they may think that uh, they will never win the game. Yeah. For for example, P. <laughs> for example, Legend One is Alliance. Uh, he he chose not to lose the game in uh, in. <clears throat> uh, he he chose to lose the game because uh, he he don't want to face straight up M so and uh, so uh, soon. So, um. I mean, so I people think, do um, defensive yeah. games whenever they they play JWM. So, but then we we don't trust that we we don't trust that defensive game win our <clears throat> our championship. So. And, and then I think the for it's the attitude. And it's then like Ricky for for the uh, other teams, mostly even if it's in finals, we notice that people are not getting their first occupation, the very second structures opened. I think this is like one of the saying that is it's pretty normal, right? If you drag something into the structure and then you occupy it. but then even if it's as simple as that people are not doing that in in like uh, a good fact. some teams they might need to wait for like 30 seconds before they get to their own structures and i think this is uh, one of the things that uh, we all know that we need to do but then we don't really do that in a way cool yeah i agree i've i've said it more multiple times the shrine of life is that one building that most people very much don't give enough love to, right? Every single time there's a shrine of life that stays unoccupied for a few seconds instead of yeah, instantly exactly. being occupied. Yeah, that is a very yeah. common mistake for sure. Um, yeah, and another mistake is that Ricky is not uh, naked running uh, after we win the OL. That was, was <laughs> that the bet? Was that the bet? You guys promised yeah. uh, Ricky naked running to happen. Guys win? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, just, I'm just, so... just okay. Uh oh, uh oh, because the chat, the chat has been going wild with it. So uh, I was like, I'm guessing yeah. this is a bet or this is a promise or something. But uh oh, the king has spoken. Yeah, we, we are all looking. We are all looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, let's let's put it this way. I would I would recommend it not to be streamed on YouTube. That could get you in trouble. <laughs> okay. 
Um, as, okay. So you guys mentioned that you divided your team into offense and defense, correct? Um, uh, that's that, that was kind of one of my questions. How did you guys divide the team? Do you have like three lanes? Do you have yesterday 411K talked about strong team and weaker team? Um, how, how did you guys divide yourselves? And when you are in Discord, are you guys or in whatever voice chat you use, are you guys all together or you're also split into the groups? Yeah, we split uh, two teams in Discord. <clears throat> and I lead uh, top lane and Billy will lead uh, bottom lane. Oh, gotcha. And... So it's top and bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah correct. With two and, uh... different style of leadership. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, different style. And, and the top lane is very serious and the bottom lane is uh, just a opening party, I think. Yeah, <laughs> a, a market. A market. Wow, language. <laughs> yeah, okay. So the party so is the, down the below people... and, the, and the hard work is up on the top. I see. Yeah, yeah just 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 the uh, just the person is different. Yeah, and and I think the most of the talk is is drunk, mm -hmm. uh, be, before <laughs> before we we enter top thirty two. So so in uh in the top lane, I always stop people to talk any uh any drunk message. They have to uh, mention every every single command, uh reminder or something. Yeah, who who are who are following me? But but I I don't I don't know how uh, B Billy B Billy sound. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe Billy can can talk more about uh his his team. Yeah, our our, our link is just trash talking all the time, and then and that's uh, not a bad thing. That's not yeah, we have so... our language. Yeah, I think we have <laughs> our language. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, then, a little bit uh, of banter is always good. Always good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, Ricky, yeah, but, but, sorry, Billy, you said your team was led a little bit differently. Yeah, and then we always debate who is a uh, better uh, leadership uh, style, which one is the better leadership style. Well, and then, during uh, practice sessions, you guys can switch and then make a vote. See, see who prefers what. Uh, we 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 win and we lose, so it's never really a conclusion on that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, I'm curious. Uh, this is a weird one, right? Because it's, it's it sounds now that you guys actually won, right? It sounds really, really. Um, looking back at it is a little tough. But at what point during a Cyrus League, you guys realize thought for the first time, like, I mean, when we came into the the league, we came in saying we're gonna win this thing. You know, when when you came into, a lot of people say we come in and win this thing. Sure. But at what point during the league, you actually started believing that you have a chance to win Osiris League? Uh, for me, uh, for my team, I, as I say, as a sub team, uh, I never think we will win the game, especially in final game. And although although we we took the whole uh, the whole objective in the top lane, what I think is so what so what. <laughs> if we still we, we still don't win the game, okay? So to continue to execute the plan, to execute our strategy to to and uh, to defeat the BOM, so we never think that we will have a chance until the last minute of the game. And and this attitude applies to every single game, even even though uh, even uh, before the final game. Yeah. So so yeah, and so so I I I I. Uh, so in my in my sub team, uh, there is four person. Yeah. <laughs> how, how uh, here's here's the thing, right? Like, I I definitely yeah. understand that attitude, right? But when you are after this, at some at some point during the league, let's I'm just throwing a number, okay? At the top sixteen, you guys finished the match. You guys said cool. See you guys tomorrow. You hung up Discord. At that. That at some point, when you were by yourself, not with the team, at some point you thought, listen, we actually have something amazing going on here. Forget about the attitude inside the team for a second, but you guys personally, at what point by yourselves, you know, when you were chilling and hunting barbarians or doing something like that, you first time realized, holy shit, we have something amazing going on in this team. 
Um, I think it is by looking into the gameplay of our opponents. I mean, uh, before the top thirty-two, our gameplay is pretty much the same as the others because it's just smashing the opponent with the uh, difference in alliance power. Mm-hmm. But then entering into the group stage, and then we start to notice, hey, how about uh, winning those like without any alliance uh, power difference? And then we we start to see like okay we we don't have the alliance advantage the power advantage, winning by a large margin, and then people in the last sixteen or lots like they are still committing those mistakes that we can see and we think that they should not commit in the last final sixteen or eight. So I think that's the the time when when we start to think okay maybe we are actually like really doing something that. Uh, is better than the other lines in terms of our execution, in terms of our teamwork, and that's the timing. I think uh, we we start to think, okay, maybe we have a chance. And actually, it's just game by game. We are just watching. Okay, our next opponent. Actually, this they are not that strong. We can win this. And then after that, and then we 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 watched another gameplay, and then it's not that strong either. So we can win this as well. So I think this is just a game by game. We we start to gain our momentum and uh, our confidence in ourselves. So that's you said top thirty two was where you started slowly figuring out we got something good going on here. These guys cannot beat us, or these guys are weaker than we think they are. Um, yep. That, that's that's super cool. It's it's interesting, right? Because some teams came in thinking, you know, um, I'll tell you as JWM two, our target was to attempt to make it to top sixteen. And when we made it to top 16, it was like, huh, all right? I guess top eight it is. And then we make it to top eight, it was like, huh, maybe top four? And top four happened. And it was a top four where I thought for the first time, like a lot of folks said, because of the way the house, the, 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 t- the thing ended up, it'll be a JWM versus JWM2 final. I never thought about that until we made it to the top four. And then I saw you guys and I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> um, what's what's a okay. memorable mistake? At some point along the way, you guys must have made a mistake. Uh, any, it doesn't really necessarily matter at what stage per se. But what is one mistake you guys made in a match that was was fairly severe that you had to overcome while the match was happening that could have been a potentially dangerous mistake? Yeah, I think uh, one of the mistakes is about uh, Billy. Uh, Billy just just had a reference <laughs> one few lengths because uh, he didn't join join the rally. The AT. He didn't join a rally. Uh, yeah, he didn't join the rally, but uh, his his uh, can just close to the rally. <laughs> yeah, in, in, yeah, I, I think I think that should be the same uh, semi final game. Yeah. Whereas JWM two, and and also uh, in the final game, our uh, one of our member book just just went to <laughs> the UM direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a big our, mistake. Our teammate grabbed the grabbed the arc and then run to the JWM direction. <laughs> yeah, that that we saw. I was like, uh, wait, what? So so scary. <laughs> now that's that's one of those moments, and it's a good thing you guys managed to recover out of it, right? Like. A lot of teams don't manage to recover out of big mistakes. Uh, for us, it was when you guys took the sky altar. As soon as you took the sky altar, it, it just went downhill from there. Um, I think uh, Pico, one of your guys, uh, messed up by just stop. He stopped attacking. He just went back. I I don't, I know don't, which one. I, I can, I don't yeah. know, but I can definitely yep. I can see that being a thing. Uh, one of the issues that happens, right, is that potentially someone who is who is fighting was fighting uh your the march that went into the building and then because there's no march anymore it went home or something no, like that so. uh, no no one of your guys was killing it killing the altar with three of his marches mm-hmm. and then at like 10 seconds left before the first occupation he just stopped and went back started going back and then he started going back to attack it again but it was too late gotcha. so i don't know who it is but yeah i think uh, something has to be done with it yeah, that, that there's a lot of there were a lot of mistakes in that match that um I think that to an extent because we never really thought we'd get this far when we got there it was like 
a little bit of nervousness, a little bit of stress, a little bit of going up against you guys, which, you know, it's kind of like going up against JWM. Um, you guys specifically came in with the strong attitude, but a lot of other teams, it's hard for them to go up against JWM with a good, strong attitude. And it was just as hard for us to go up against you guys because you guys were, were doing what you were doing and you were changing the way the game was played. Um, and so that's interesting. We, you didn't only point out a memorable mistake by you guys, but also you guys definitely caught on to the biggest mistake we made. Yep, that <laughs> sounds about right. <laughs> Uh, what 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 was something that was the biggest? I guess the most challenging part of the uh, Osiris League. It doesn't necessarily need to be about Ark, but in general, throughout Osiris League, what was the biggest challenge for you guys to get there? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest challenge is petty small. The petty small because uh, <laughs> we we all know the strategy each other and we keep petty. So uh, it is very, yeah, yeah. It, it is, uh, I think, I think you you have the biggest challenge how how to push us so tough. Yeah, because uh, you know we 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 practice once a week, right? The formal mm -hmm. one, and then even if we practice one once a week, uh, we 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 cannot like usually get the full team because people have their own business, their families, and we understand, and then. It's tough because uh, we want to arrange some practice section and no one joins, <laughs> and then we need to pack like okay, yeah. uh, uh, can we can we practice at that time? Uh, can we have some substitutes? One of our toughest thing is on practice, and then second one is um, on our alliance uh, uh, commanders uh, pairing. Okay, so uh, I think a lot of people like want to know why are we taking LC, right? And why are we taking uh, all the, the commander pairings that we, we want or we choose? Um, one of the reasons is uh, our, <clears throat> our choice are limited. <laughs> and okay. um, you, 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 may, you, may, you may know, like, you may uh, say, okay, HKL have some great uh, commanders, strong commanders. But then if you see those battle report, I need, I need your support, Gecko, uh, on this because uh, some of them are not really ex expertise. Like, for example, the Quan that is attacking your uh, structures, this, that is not really expertise. And the LC even is not really expertise. And then because why are we choosing LC is because it is from Go Chess. And then we don't have at work. If we have Edward or we have Ramsey, then we will use it. But then, unfortunately, you cannot see many of them from our side. And people are like asking, okay, why are we all using Constantine and Charles, but not the others? Um, this is because all people or players in our team do not have wood with a team in our not not an expertise in the ten in our team. So um, this is our own uh, commander option left, Constantine and Chow. So that is because, okay, so because, why, why I'm saying this now, because we are, you know which we should have all the commanders available, right? So mm -hmm. uh, before mm -hmm. that, we, 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 we won't disclose for then. <laughs> now we can, because uh, we, we, we don't have actually many options. So we, we, we are just using what we have got. That's that's and cool. then this is uh, one of the challenge. Yeah, uh, someone in the chat's been is asking, would you choose Wuzetian over Constantine if you had the option? Yeah, depends on the situation. I prefer both. I mean, I prefer both. Uh, ready, and Ricky then we said, can yeah. switch. Ricky, what's what's your reasoning behind this? That it, it was an insta. Yeah, what's what? <laughs> why would you go with Wuzetian over Constantine? Uh, I think Constantine is better for us because uh, we test the team uh, pair. Yeah, I, I, if, I, I actually I think everyone can find find the secrets in pretty small. Mm -hmm. uh, we we are we have the good usage of uh, Constantine Quan Yu, and some uh sorry not Quan Yu uh it should be Leo. Leo yeah, because yeah. because of of the commander skills. I think everyone can find it, and I want to disclose here. Yeah. <laughs>
No, that's fine. That's okay. completely fine. Yeah, and and I also think that's uh, in invitation no much uh, people have a uh, different uh, commander pair because oh, we sure. will do more, <laughs> yeah we will, we will have more more testing in the practice mode about the invitation no much yeah I don't know you know it's crazy that you guys say we didn't have that big of a commander availability right because out of every single team we went up against. You guys had the most Attila Takeda rallies just smashing all over the place. And it's because uh, we lost the uh, uh, KVK before. KVK too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we didn't so couldn't we, max uh, uh, Vu. We uh, max Vu, so we had gold uh, head. You see, yeah, you we, see we had... that <laughs> chat, right, that right there. Paranoa, the, the one, one of the few things he said today on this interview was one of the most important ones. The fact that they lost KVK season two, they looked looked at it as an opportunity rather than as a as a bad situation. They don't have Uzetian available, available, therefore now they have all these sculptures available, which were ready to go for Attila Takeda. That's actually pretty dope. I like that attitude, you know. That's sick. I never thought yep. about that. Yeah. And now technically you can get Uzetian right through Card King. Yeah, but she's trash, so. There you go. <laughs> There you go, the paranoia I know. <laughs> uh, this this yep. is something that you guys, my in my opinion, um, HKL will go down in history of the Cyrus League as the team who created one very important movement in Ar Ark of Osiris, which changed all of Ark of Osiris, and that is rotations. For those of you who are not gamers out there, rotations uh, a rotation is a movement on a map that is based on specific timings, specific events, specific callouts, so forth and so on. If you're playing a tactical first person shooter where you're in a team of five, if you know that the other team is going to one side, you rotate towards that side, so forth and so on. And in Ark of Osiris, HKL were the, one of the first teams that rotated on the map very, very, very frequently. Um, how do you guys agree with me? How do you, how important are rotations in your opinion? Like, how did you guys think of implementing all of this movement on the map? Mm, yeah, I, I think, I think we, we, we uh, most of us are just execute the pen and, and just uh, draw away the, the pen Thirty minutes, then they they will they will just follow our call to mobilize uh, everywhere, and yeah, and, yeah we, we we need we need to decide uh, how many trips uh, we have to put in every single objective uh, or middle lane, so uh, it's it's all it's all about uh, communication, yeah. We, 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 uh, our, our pen is very flexible. Yeah, just about communication. Did you set some sort of, uh, and I'm not, don't, don't expose anything that you shouldn't, but did you set some sort of timings for rotations or they're all just based on situation where essentially you two are on the call, you understand how your marches are, are moving on the map and then based on the situation you might make the calls. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. Uh, I don't think there's no any precise uh, timing, but it's mostly just you practice a lot of times, you get a feeling of how fast your marches are when you move, when you're dead and everything, and then you, you just know from experience where you need to be when you look at the certain buildings, if they have reinforcements around them and stuff like that, So and then you move towards that objective. Yeah, It's just uh, experience and practice. Cool. So there's it wasn't about the timer. It was about the leadership telling the people, Let's me it, it rotate this way, rotate that way. We gotta go here. We gotta go there. It's not about necessarily specific parts of the game, but rather situational. So, uh, the the reason I'm saying this is because before this interview, I actually watched about. Uh, the, I found someone who had a couple of vods of your matches, and I watched three matches between yesterday and today when Ricky and I started talking, and I noticed that your rotations are not the same all the time. So the, the reason I ask this is because what folks are going to start to do is try to imitate you, right? And it's important mm. for the community to understand that imitating you doesn't mean look at the clock and do what they did, but rather have that understanding, which 
Billy, Ricky, and the team had of communication, synchronizing between the team, and being able to move on the map as a unit based on situations rather than on the clock. Am I, am I correct yep. here? Yep. Sweet, so chat, take note of that. Don't, don't go look at the clock and see where they are. It's not gonna help you understand the game. That's, that's the cool part of, of what you guys taught us. You guys taught us that you understand the game well and better than others and implemented this crazy thing called rotations. And I'm promising to you right now, next to Cyrus League season, every single team is gonna be rotating all over the place. The real question is, which ones are gonna be the ones to understand the game better and do it correctly? Um, yep. In top 32, we had a weird situation, right? Uh, all of a sudden we went from not having alliance skills to having alliance skills, right? Like it went from playing regular Ark of Osiris to now having to implement an Ark of Osiris strategy that also includes alliance skills. Um, how do you think those alliance skills affected the top 32 matches? Yeah, I think Pierre will have comment on that. You want me to say something? Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, yeah, I think the alliance skills aren't aren't that good or aren't uh, implemented very well because you have 20 skills and I think four of them are maybe extremely useful and the rest of them are just complete garbage and exactly. a lot of them don't don't make <laughs> any sense and just are a complete waste of uh, your alliance charges so and if you implement stuff like teleports it is so so much more valuable than any other skill that exists mm -hmm. in the game and i just i don't see the point of trying to make a skill like that you just basically tell everyone you start with i don't know six less uh, charges because you're going to use them by i don't know minute 38 and then i mean what's the point everyone's going to have that skill because it is so it, it just delete that skill the skills are not balanced enough is what you're saying. Yeah. There are skills that yeah. are too overpowered that everybody is going to use pretty much on the same times. And then uh, so there's 20 others that are not are completely useless. Yeah. If, if you compare it, if you compare them, it's just, uh, it's not, it's a uh, too big of a uh, difference in their power levels or something. Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, exactly. Uh, we're looking at the screen right now. We have the, the match playing in the background, war drums, bog down, Swift Stride, um, what's the name of it? Divine Aid, and uh, the, there is the defense one as well. I forget the name of it. Lots of them. All the that's AOEs pretty much the are... ones that that's pretty much the ones everyone uses, right? Like yeah, but it, yeah. it's it's so. Eh, I mean, you move so slow. They last for thirty seconds. You're gonna cast a skill and they're gonna be gone. I mean, I don't know. I would just completely rework the whole. The and then we have skill skills, system. and then we have. Uh, the, the sticky one, I mean, to, to turn the 30 armies inv invisible, right? Mm -hmm. And basically, it is useless because we test it and we cannot make the arc invisible as well. So oh, if so they if can... carry the arc, it will be visible. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you can hide the arc and people cannot target the arc, then that would be much funnier. I mean, at least make the five or around five skill point worth it. And then we one right and then the scout is not even instant and then it costs the 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 skill point and then it doesn't really add up or make sense i mean if it the scout is instant then it might have its value yeah. but then it's just increasing the speed of the scout and then the healing one the factor is way too low to make a difference in any of any part of the map so that is like, for example, if you have like Ramsey now, and then you have all the Alexander and the like um, Saladin, mm -hmm. it won't really like add up to the value of other skills comparing to the healing one or the like scout. I think they can like think of ways to improve those skills that is not really that useful. Interesting. So if it's not completely, uh, if not, Ba rebalance completely rework try to figure out how to how to make it so that they're not only per, um, useful in a sense per se but they also add some entertainment and fun to the match right yeah, yeah more exactly. dynamic yeah so yeah that's that's something else that i was going to ask you guys it's like 
Uh, Alliance skills was something that was introduced to change Ark of Osiris, right? Before that, Ark of Osiris was the same exact stuff, and they kind of added this new system to, to give it another dimension. Um, what Do you guys have any suggestions to Lilith as people, as, as the guys who understand this game mode as of right now the best? What are, what's something that you would add, change, or remove out of Ark of Osiris beyond, of course, the Alliance skills that could make the game more fun, more competitive, more interesting to watch, make more people want to play it? Um, I think the developer wants uh, our okay to be eSport. Uh, of arc game, so maybe uh, I I just I just get the idea from the League of Legend or something like that, and uh, maybe maybe we can have a we, we can have a mass because uh, we did usually in in the arc game seems like it uh, seems like it is useless, but uh, it, it can be useful if we change the system or put something on that. Yeah, um, do have some yeah. yeah, I I think the shrines of life. Just uh, I don't know why why they are they're still giving the the buff of healing when you have now healing skills. So all those lower level yeah. alliances, if they want, they can just use that. And I don't know what's the point of keeping the that buff. Maybe you just rework that buff into I don't know, give faster charging to skill alliance um, skills or something. Increase the movement speed. Whatever. Maybe. Yeah, just make it more because yeah. it's completely. It's just. I don't Useless. know why it's still that, yeah. <laughs> and the outposts also, I would just throw them away, put something else there. And yeah, because uh, the whole mode becomes really repetitive game and yep. it, 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 they need to change something. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and I think um, for the art game to be like more entertaining, there might be an uh, incentive for Lilith to increase the skill that is going for attack instead of defense. Because if once you find out attack is more useful, then all over the... Oh, you got cut off there for a second, Billy. Be the... You said if, if atta okay? when attack, you, you got, got off there for a second. You said once oh, figured out that attack is better than defense. Then uh, the whole battlefield will be all uh, actions on attacking structures instead of uh, just one or two attack, and most of them are defending. So I think first of all they need to like think of the ways to increase people's in incentive to attack instead of defense. And then the second one is uh, I think people can maybe have a uh, for competitive mode like Osiris League. Maybe they can choose the commander they want to ban. I mean, both parties choose one commander that they don't want to be in the field, and then that it makes would everything really... dynamic. Exactly, and then they they will have uh, they they cannot just stick to their own plan, right? Mm -hmm. For example, if you think K thirty or are a tether together, then you just ban a tether, right? And yep. then you you will see it. K30, which with the brand new strategies, without those rallies and stuff like that, and then we we can perhaps use a game mode that is. I think that the invitational is great because, uh, seems like there is a fair um, uh, between like equal power, equal uh, commanders, but then how about a game mode that can just limit the tier to tier four, so that everyone can just use tier 4 or below and without the uh, being like afraid to be bullied by those uh, T5 or whales mm -hmm. with only just uh, the commander or the power uh, um, difference to win I think those are those uh, uh, recommendations that maybe they can think of to to increase the incentive and also one of them is uh, in my mind is that for example uh whether we can have some application for cross kingdom friendly match from Akbar Cyrus. for now the practice match mode it is just limited to like one alliance within the own alliance right I understand that the server will go very like crazily crowded if we can go all the way free. For example, we can 
initiate a, a, a friendly match with you guys in JWM too. But then how about just we need to apply like once for a week. Uh, we, we, we are not, uh, we want to have, have one match, for example, with the other alliance that, uh, for example, OV. Then, then, then we can we can have it like uh, in a friendly match and and for example not necessarily like every day but then once a week for example, then it it will create like content people to report or to like stream or to mm-hmm. watch. I definitely example. like that. This is, yeah, exactly. Uh, someone asked in the chat, do you think that Ark of Osiris has the potential to become an esport, like something that's more competitive? Maybe if they yeah. if they showcase us how the initiation is gonna look, maybe if it's good. I don't know. But currently they are no way. Not even close. It just has nothing that would make it like an esport or something like a sport where you feel like you have I mean they they need to elim- eliminate the, the difference on yeah. the commanders and the power. Yeah. Yeah, then you can really consider whether they can turn it to the eSport. It needs to be fair advantage for everybody, fair yeah. play for everybody. That way it becomes about the strategy, about the gameplay and the attitude rather than the credit cards. Yeah, exactly. So um, one final question I had for you guys, then we can kind of turn to the chat and chat. You guys can start asking questions away. Um, that is, they'll probably will get through them after we're done here. but. Uh, besides Ark of Osiris, right? Outside of Ark of Osiris, Osiris League, you guys seem to have thought about these things already on how to how to improve that game mode. Um, do you have any any suggestions? What are your thoughts about the the long term development of this game? Uh, do you have any suggestions as to how this game can maintain its its uh, popularity and grow even further? Yeah, I think you should. Uh, I think that there has uh, as we that uh, immigration system because uh, the top thirty five and uh, thirty two kingdoms has only one input per month, mm-hmm. and it is very limited our total power. I I I I know uh, we all know that uh, the developer may want to learn money from passport, but uh, it is not healthy. Uh, development for our old kingdom because most of people want to immigrate to new kingdom to be uh to be boss or something yeah. so uh so so yeah, for the long term development uh you uh, i think it is not necessary to remove the uh top 32 system but but uh there should be more capacity to let more people join top 32 kingdoms because uh, we have uh, we have already lost many 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 uh, active players uh, during the period of uh, OL or the back uh, between uh, KVK yeah yeah, yeah you I guys think... lost KVK season 2 that was probably a big blow for you guys in terms of population so I definitely understand I think uh, if I don't see the reason why you wouldn't allow older kingdoms, I don't know, from age a year and a half, I don't know, to have maybe two migrations per month or something. Because it, see what's the issue with creating a, a old established kingdoms, you know, the popular ones wh- which everyone knows and is aware of, rather than having 150 people migrate after every every KVK to a new kingdom and keep migrating and now you have, I don't know, millions of dead kingdoms that were just abandoned after one or two seasons and it just keeps on keeps on happening month after month and I'm, I don't see the issue of having uh, strong old kingdoms uh, building and growing stronger and stronger. I just, I don't know why they wouldn't allow some, something like that to happen. Well, yeah. to, to an extent what ended up happening um, was that Kingdoms like uh, like 93, like 46, like 103 ended up being generated where uh, the, the, uh, the thing is, right, you spend a lot of money on the game and you, you want to be the top dog and all that is good. But when you're surrounded with people who don't have the same investment level and dedication that you have, then all of a sudden you get a little bit uh, upset. And then what ended up happening before my, when the beginning of migration is that all the big players just wanted to be with each other because 
they I'm already putting in all this investment. I want to make sure that I have around me people who are investing too and are building up too. And I'm not just carrying a team. And so I agree with you that there has to be a way for that. The top 32 system has to work in a way that maybe to get into the top 32, you can only get once a month, but to move between the top 32 should be something that's allowed a little bit more maybe. That way you, you do allow these big kingdoms to have shifts within them, but at the same time, they stay competitive to an extent. Um, I definitely agree that the yeah. migration system is all messed up. Yeah, and then the second one is uh, the leg issue, right? So, um, even when the Osiris League, like even the finals, we, we are experiencing leg, and then people coming in or coming out saying that, okay, they cannot enter the game and they are like quite lagging and then they need to restart. And even me, myself, I need to clarify for myself because my teammate always laugh at me on my Constantine going on sun bath, coming out of the structures all the time. I think this is because of the leg issues. So if not the leg issues, then we can perform better, I think, at least better for most of us. So I think before like going into the like, immigration or, or other stuff, if they want to make this like for the Cyrus to be funnier or the ent more entertaining, then they need to fix this issue. Oh, that's not only an arc, lagging. right? Wars. You yeah. should have seen like two and a half days ago, I was streaming our altar our altar war and it was like i, I tell yeah. my march to go backwards <laughs> it takes 15 seconds to, to get my command while that happened my march is already at their at their gate and i'm like yo this is i lost it i was really upset but i agree with you that's exactly. that's a big thing they have to be able to give us that um infrastructure for the game to run properly because they do have a lot of very fun things in this game but all that is overshadowed by bad servers, lag, and lack of optimization. Exactly, Would you guys exactly, be willing exactly. to give up on, for example, animations for performance? Because one of the things yeah. that are really painful in this game is the, an the attack animations, the skill animation. The skill animations have to happen because you need to uh, understand which commanders are nearby, and that's how you know this. But if we, for example, if Rise of Kingdoms were to take away the attack animation of marches hitting each other, or even take off of the screen the uh, the amount of damage being done or something like that, would that some be something that you, you think would be compromisable or um, it's just a matter of they got to figure out how to make this work better? Maybe when you have the, the low settings, maybe just ma make it even lower, you know, just remove the animations and see what else you can remove. But other than that, I don't see what else you could remove because there's literally ne nothing when it's uh, low graphic settings because it's only like one one commander and that's it. I don't know what mm -hmm. else you could do. Yeah, the animations on the screen are a real killer. That's what usually causes device-based lag, right? So there are two different types of lag oh. we face. You have device lag and then server lag. Oh, the, uh, definitely with the alliance skills. I mean, you have this giant tornado like that covers the whole it looks like it's i don't know fucking armageddon but it deals like no damage to anything or anyone and it's <laughs> what is that, up with that i don't know that's a good point that's a really good point like you guys need such a big animation you might as well do something yeah yeah well chat this is uh this is open for you guys we have a question here someone asked how do you guys think this kbk will go for you guys yeah, uh, we will try our best. Uh, we, we cannot guarantee we will win. Yeah, because it depends on uh, our teammates also. It is not uh, one kingdom uh, to carry all. Uh, yeah, you know, you know what? You know, not Gecko. Uh, mm -hmm. Ricky will like uh, check on the screenshot from our friend Alliance and ask them to clear the action point. Crazy. <laughs> right, I mean, you got to uh, do what you got to do. You gotta do what you gotta do. But that's a good thing, Here, right? It's a team. You need the team to Yeah, Rick, Ricky together. said, how come, how come you guys are not clearing the action point? <laughs> <laughs> you just From empty out your AP crazy. while you have full AP. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who, who even cares? It's fucking coin again. Yeah. yeah. I, True. That, that is certainly deterring me from screen capping my own device because 
Ricky will always ask why I'm not clearing off my AP. Hey, I, it feels like it feels like Ricky. You have a reputation to uphold. You have a reputation here. The man, the man usually so has something to for you to improve on. Okay, maybe maybe I'm not going to disclose more. If 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 I disclose more, then maybe I will get zeroed when I wake up. Probably not a good morning. idea. Um, <laughs> someone asked in the chat, "How can a free-to-play player be effective or even more effective inside Ark of Osiris?" Do you think does it it matters whether mm -hmm. someone is a free-to-play player or not? Can a free-to-play player find itself in a top-tier team if he or she have the correct? Um, amount of troops or something like that long term yeah i think so yeah i mean definitely because uh for us in case uh in in our own uh opera uh, ol team we actually have a few free to uh, play players and then in our starting 30 we have players a lot not whales you can see like uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the power force is around 80 million which is i think normal if you are playing like around one and a half year and then the key is just uh to understand what you're trying to go for for example if you're going for some commanders that is useful then they can always contribute in our OL team I mean, if if you are like going for all infantry commanders, then uh, and you go like expertise a few, for example, Quan or some other useful commanders like Constantine, then they will have an impact on the game and a large impact on the game, basically, because um, we 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 just have like a few useful commanders. Other than that, uh, for example, Ethelfred can be a useful commander as well. So, I don't really see uh, the reason why people are free to play cannot win or cannot uh 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 take over the league. But then for sure, you need people uh who are willing to spend money or who are uh, storing a lot of the uh, gold uh, sculptures that can always invest to the newest pairing or if the meta change, then they can react instantly. But then this is not really something that only whales can do, right? Mm -hmm. If you are free to play, you can always uh, stack your uh, gold uh, structures and then you use it in one go when you find a commander pairing that you are really good at or it's really working in for example open field kvk or ol then you can contribute i mean this is the case in hkl as well i mean we have we we, we, we have people who are not spending a lot and then they are in the starting 30 as well so everyone can make their statement in out hmm. i i i like to hear that it's it's good that one of the things that I noticed bigger kingdoms usually do is they go for power, power, power over necessarily uh, utility players. So what you're saying is as long as a player understands what the role they want to go for, they invest in being part of that role and it's a role that is needed within the team, then any type of player can have a shot at making it in. Yeah. I mean, you, you just yep. got to have the useful commanders maxed and you got to know how to use them. And that's it. I mean, they can even be epic commanders. It's not a... Yeah. It's not that big of a deal. You just got to make sure that you're using them to their you know, fullest potential. But if you're like a free-to-play guy and you max all, I mean, uh, just, you know, you gotta, you've got to have st stuff that is useful for the yeah. whole team. Not, you're not going to be a rally leader in Ark of Cyrus if you're free-to-play. Yeah, we have people uh, who, who is not even maxing Tao Tao and grabbing the Ark with Tao Tao just on Sunday. <laughs> Interesting. He's not even that's expertizing cool. Tao Tao. Yeah. And it's still on the field grabbing the arc. That's that's actually very cool. Um, one yeah. final question here from chat. Who was your biggest, your strongest opponent this league? Who was the hardest match to play? Vicky. Uh oh. No, 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 Vicky. You, you can select one. <laughs> uh. Maybe maybe you maybe, maybe you, <laughs> you go for it. I think, yeah. I think it's hard to tell because you know when we I don't know started the group stages, 
mm-hmm. top 32 or something, you improve every match by, I don't know, 10, 15 percent. You improve your performance and uh, you could have an equal you know, amount of stress and difficulty fighting the opponents, you know, but your uh, yeah. skills improve. So it's hard to tell. I mean, all of them could have been equally difficult to fight, but we just got yeah. them a lot better by the end of it. So I don't know. I, I couldn't point a finger at it. Now, I really like that because essentially, theoretically, right? If you could, now that you know all you know and you did all you did and went through this, if it w- if you went back to uh, for one of your first top 32 teams, at that point, you uh, you in the beginning when you were there, you you had a certain level of knowledge, but now your level of knowledge is so much bigger that if you were to take all of this level of knowledge and go back, the match would have been completely different and potentially yeah. much easier, right? So as time exactly, went by, yeah. you guys got exactly. better. That's that's a exactly. that's a really 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 good really cool way to look at it. Essentially. Um, I can tell you that out of all the matches I played in JWM2, you guys were by far the hardest and of course the one that we lost. Uh, but the thing is, it's not a matter of, uh, as far as I see it, it's not a matter of which team was stronger or weaker, but rather how much did you learn out of the match, whichever outcome it was, right? And yeah. it feels like for you guys, every single match was another couple of steps up the stairs all the way to the top. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. Yeah. Well, is there any any final words? Anything you guys want to do? Any shout outs you want to send out? The the stage is yours, guys. We could do it. Yeah. So we, we feel yeah. we feel sorry for the for the uh, city that we rallied in JWM two match. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and that's. Then, um, <laughs> 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 yeah, that was pretty funny. Not sorry, was not funny. sorry. All yeah. good. Yeah, that's the paranoia I know. <laughs> there you go. And then um, I think we we are, you know, and then we we hopefully we can like uh, match up with some of the strong alliance in uh, the other uh, room which we haven't really battled against. And mm-hmm. for sure, we will learn a lot from them as well, and like continue to improve our own strategy. And then we also want to, uh, of course, thank all our teammates in the OL team because not only those who are really the starting thirty. Because I mean, for actually for the whole OL team, we are not really the first starting thirty that we are from the very beginning because we, we do some uh, fine tuning and then we switch some of the um, our starting lineup. But then all of our substitutes and starting 30 contribute their part. Uh, no matter it's on the field or off the field, they enter into the Discord and then they just remind us on stuff that we might miss out. And then also all the K30 family members who are shouting and helping us to uh, like happy for us when we get the champion and support us from right from the start. Even believe that we can win uh, since we enter, for example, in the first uh, final 32. So I think the support from our kingdom is really immense. And in particular, uh, it, for the people uh, from, because Hong Kong Legends is from Hong Kong, right? And then uh, we have a lot of good and friendly allies all over the world and all like they are supporting us despite they're not even uh, Hong Kong people. And then we also really appreciate all people without you guys. We cannot go that far away from con. Uh, con- continue our uh, championship road and most probably we cannot even continue our practice match because every one of us seems to be like, okay, we don't want practice match anymore after the, the wild game. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's one of those things where, you know, time will go by, the, the adrenaline will eventually disappear and then that hunger comes back, right? Right now, you guys, you, your bellies are full, the beer was awesome, the celebration was fun, the hangover is still there a little bit, 
but I'm sure that by the time a Cyrus Invitational rolls by and practice starts happening, you guys are gonna get back onto that hunger of wanting to win again. Um, and that's, that's gonna be a fun time. I mean, we're gonna find ourselves together in a Cyrus Invitational. I don't think we'll fight each other, but at least we'll represent our realm to an extent and hopefully kick butt. Um, guys, first of all, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me. Uh, it's a lot of people think that, you know, because the, and I'll tell you this, when casting the match, it was very, very tough because for me, uh, first of all, it's my team, it's my guys, it's my, it's, it's my crew. But at the same time, uh, I knew a lot of the things that they are going to do as I know the strategy. And it was really, really difficult to be able to cast in an impartial way because I knew a lot of the things that are coming out of the JWM side, but I really didn't know a lot about what you guys were doing. Even though we faced you, I after the first five minutes, I was like, these guys changed some stuff up. This is not the same thing. So f for the record, for Kingdom 93 and HKL, I think you guys are crazy. I think you guys made something that nobody ever believed would be possible, which is not only beating JWM, which OV did, but you guys also did it in such a convincing fashion that I have a feeling that when your name is on the building, it's not only gonna be on the building, it's also going to be in every single person's strategy from here on out. So thank you guys very much. I appreciate your time and, and everything you guys did. And I'm really looking forward to get better at Ark of Osiris learning from uh, HKL. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. Thank you for the interview. Thank you. Thank you for the yeah. And uh, yeah, so chat, here we go. Thank you guys very much for all your continuous support, for listening in through this interview. It'll be available momentarily. After we're done, it'll be up on YouTube. You'll be able to go back. There's a lot of awesome insight by Ricky, Paranoa, and Billy, who gave us an unbelievably fun breakdown of their gameplay, of a lot of little things, tips, and tricks from attitude to um, understanding the game, to understanding your roles, to understanding where and how you want to be on on a level as a team. And even they mentioned they struggled to get a, a 45 people to play the match. They struggled to get that. Some of these teams are fighting to get into their top alliance uh, Ark of Osiris team. And these guys were scrambling through finding people with unexpertised commanders, with uh, people who don't really want to go there. And they did it. So take this interview a little bit for your own motivation for your own kingdom, for your own team. Anybody can do it. What you need to do is just like Ricky said, the right attitude, work hard, test and practice and learn out of every single match and get better even if you win or even if you lose. And personally, HKL changed the way I look at Ark of Osiris and I'm pretty sure it did for most of the game. So chat. I appreciate you guys very much for chilling with me today. We're going to stream again tomorrow, regular stream, 4 p.m. UTC like we usually do. The, again, the VOD will be available. Don't forget to drop a like on the interview before you leave. I'd appreciate that very much. Helps out the channel, lets me know that you guys enjoyed the content. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys sooner rather than later. Enjoy the rest of your week and take care. Peace.